Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Life, and I'm here today to give you some tips for sewing small quilt blocks. I recently started sewing some three inch finished blocks and thought it would be a good idea to share some tips and tricks for working with smaller pieces. Now you don't have to be sewing as small as three inch finished to utilize these tips. A lot of these tips will work even for bigger blocks that have small sections in them. So we'll get started and I'll go over all of my tips and tricks for working with small blocks and small parts of blocks. First, just a little background about kind of what prompted me to film this video. I recently decided to do the Socialites quilt along with Fat Quarter Shop using the three inch blocks. Now I've designed two of the blocks for this quilt along and when I pieced my first block way back in the summer, I did the nine inch size. Then I got super busy and behind on my blocks and when I started working on this again, I decided it would be really fun to make the three inch blocks. The patterns for these blocks come in three inch, six inch and nine inch finished and they are free patterns. So if you're thinking about a project where you want to try out some of these tips and techniques and try making these small blocks, I really suggest getting these patterns and I will put a link below where you can find them. And additionally, if you don't want to make the quilt, these little blocks make great coasters. You can use them as part of a mug rug or as part of a little patchwork bag that you're doing. So you don't even have to make the, the whole quilt. So I'm gonna go over, first of all, just some tips and techniques that will make piecing these blocks a lot easier. And then I'm also gonna share some of the tools that I've been using as I've been sewing the blocks and getting caught up. I will, I just also wanna point out one more time that you know, you don't have to be making a small block to use these tips and techniques. Often a 12 inch block might be made up of lots of little three inch blocks. So you'll be able to use these techniques in all of your quilting. Okay, so the first tip I have is just to really, and this is just a basic tip, but just really measure and cut your pieces accurately. So you'll want to just you know, as my grandmother used to say, measure twice, cut once. So just check your measurements. That's kind of goes along with all of your quilting. The other thing with you making small blocks is that it's really important that your quarter inch seam is a quarter inch. So check the accuracy of your seam allowance. And you can do that by measuring it with a ruler after you've sewn it. And I do have a video on that that we can pop up if you need information on how to make sure your quarter inch seam allowance is correct. The third thing is you might want to use starch. If you're going to use like a starch material, then you'll want to starch your fabrics before you cut out your pieces. That is so that that starch will get into the fabric and make it less likely that your fabrics will stretch or shift. If you don't wanna use starch, there are some other alternatives. This flatter finishing fabric spray is something that I like to use. And there are other kinds of products on the market, but, and they, all, they usually all come in unscented too, if the scents bother you. But a, a finishing spray or a starch can also help with your accuracy, especially with these small pieces. Okay, so the three techniques that I started out with are cutting and measuring, quarter inch seam, and a little bit of starch. Now I'm gonna kind of move in, into some tools that can really help you with these blocks. As I, some of the blocks are more simple than others for this quilt along. This one went together really easily. It just had some half square triangles, some simple patchwork, and also some simple patchwork pieces here. But these two blocks were a little bit more complex. And so I used some tools that I have on hand to make these much, much more simple. First of all, if you're going to be making tiny flying geese units, and this block had four of them, 
This block, I believe, had eight of them. Uh, these block lock flying geese rulers in the really tiny sizes are indispensable. This one is for flying geese that finish at one half inch tall by one inch wide. I can't imagine making an accurate flying geese this small without this ruler. I just really love it. And uh, they also, they come in bigger sizes too. I, I feel like they're not as necessary for bigger sizes, but they really help you with your accuracy in this smaller size. And this one right here is for three quarter inch finished tall by one and a half inch finished wide. So, and they, they go up incrementally. But I did use the flying geese, block lock flying geese ruler for both of these blocks. And this one I believe is number 18 and this is block number 19 in the socialites sew along. This is number 20 and this one was number five, the, the first one that I designed. So, okay, the next thing you might wanna consider is half square triangle paper. And I also have a video on this paper. I really like this variety pack. It has papers for finished half square triangles in half inch, three quarter inch, one inch, and one and a half inch. So, and I used, I used that paper, let's see, on this one, this block I used it, and I also used it on this block, two different sizes, but both small paper. And these are sized for charm squares. You can also easily use them for scraps. And as I mentioned, you can get a lot of half square triangles out of one sheet. And what I did is, I actually didn't need very many, and so I saved, I saved some of my papers because I figured I will be using these later. And so I've got some extras that are kind of just ready to go and ready to trim. But I, this is my project basket for this project and I've, I've got them saved here. So this is a, a really great tool, as I mentioned, for accuracy in these smaller blocks. Okay, the next thing I wanted to mention is a rotating cutting mat can really help if you have one of those. This is a bigger one. They come in larger than this and they come in smaller than this. But it really helps to be able to rotate the cutting mat, for example, when you're cutting around all four sides of a small template. It's just not necessary but helpful. Another thing you'll want is some smaller rulers. This two and a half inch square ruler was really helpful in making this block. Um, I feel like, yeah, the center unit on this block was supposed to be two and a half inches before you added everything else. And I trimmed it ever so slightly. Mine was just a little few hairline big on a couple of the sides, but you want your pieces the right size as you go along. So if you have some smaller rulers, I have a two and a half, I have a three and a half, which you know you can use with your final block to make sure that it's okay. And even when you're doing a little bit bigger, I have a four and a half, and I believe I have a five and a half and a six and a half. So it's nice to have some smaller sized rulers just to check your accuracy as you're going along. Also, I, just a couple of smaller rectangular rulers are really helpful. You don't want to be pulling out your 8 inch by 24 inch ruler when you're trimming pieces this small. So it's, it's just really handy. My favorites are the 3.5 by 6.5 and, and the 4.5 by 8.5. And, and I use these constantly when I'm working with smaller pieces. Another ruler that is good to have on hand with smaller blocks is this Itty Bitty Eighths ruler. And these markings are, as the ruler title suggests, in 1 8 inch increments. And so this helps not only with smaller blocks, but whenever you're using a lot of 8 inch measurements. I generally only pull this out when I'm cutting pieces that have those 8 inch sizes. And then finally, 
This is the Stripology Squared Mini Ruler. This can just really help if you're cutting pieces for these blocks from your scraps and you want to save time. You want to cut a lot of one and a half inch strips from maybe layer cakes or charm packs. It's just a smaller version of this Stripology Ruler and it can be really helpful. Finally, and I kind of mentioned this before, but if you have a basket or a project box, if you're working on a, a project that has a lot of small blocks, just keep everything in one place. You know, as I mentioned here before, I've got some uh, uh, three quarter inch triangles ready here. I think these are one inch. I had a couple of extra little tiny ones that were left over when I was making. And so just if you keep all of these pieces together, you're, you know, you're not gonna use these, these tiny pieces with bigger quilts. So keep, keep your scraps for small projects together. And I think those are the, oh, one more thing I thought of. When you sew with this triangle paper, you will need to shorten your stitch length uh, to make it easier to remove the paper. And when I was sewing some of these blocks recently, I forgot to change my stitch length back to a longer length. And what I noticed it was, it was actually helpful with these small blocks because you really don't want your seams coming apart at the end of your rows. And sometimes it can be a little tricky to backstitch with these smaller pieces, but because my seam allowance had been shortened, I didn't have that problem with any of the pieces pulling apart. So that was just something that I happily learned by accident. I don't think you need it as small as they suggest for the triangle paper. I usually put my seam allowance down to 1.5 for the triangle paper, but maybe 1.7 or 1.9 for sewing smaller blocks and then that will help keep your seams together. I think those are uh, quite a few tips that will really help you with accuracy with these little blocks. Uh, be sure to press, not stretch, but just to press every step of the way as well and also measure your blocks each step of the way. One nice thing about these Socialites uh, sew along patterns and as I mentioned you can get these all for free right now, they, they do give you the finish sizes each step of the way. So you can take your rulers, you can double check, and the, this is just a great way to, to keep on track. Another thing with these patterns is they've got them rated, beginner, intermediate, and experienced. So if you feel like you wanna stay away from the experienced, you could always make doubles of a more simple block and put those in your quilt. I hope the tips that I've shared in today's video will help you with piecing small blocks and with all of your accuracy in piecing other blocks. Big blocks are usually made up of smaller pieces, so today's tips and tricks can be really useful to you. If you like this video, I'd love it if you'd share it with a friend, hit the like button, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks so much for stopping by.